Hi, welcome to lecture 14 with the topic of related rates. This topic is actually nothing new. If you think about it, we already know all the theory that we need to find, to solve these types of problems. Uh, everything that we need to know is basically summarized in here. So first of all, I guess this is something that we never discussed, but in problems where you have a function that has a physical meaning, that has physical units, what is the unit of a derivative of that function? And it's pretty easy to figure this out. If you have a function of some variable x, and let's let's denote the unit of x by these square brackets in here, and let's denote the brackets around y, the unit of the function, then the unit of the derivative is always the one of the function over the independent variable, so y over x. Example, if you have a function that measures money, let's say the unit, if you, if you can call it that, in dollars, and it measures money in time t, let's say it's measured in days, then f prime of t, the derivative, has unit of dollars per day. Why is that? We just have to remember that, well, f prime of any number, let's say t, is always equal to this particular limit of a difference quotient where you take the, in this form, you take the limit variable to the t where you are finding the derivative. So the this limit, this difference quotient here, first of all, is an expression that has this units of whatever f is divided by whatever the variable is. So the fraction itself has this unit, and then the limit is just a number that this fraction approaches. Well, then it preserves the same unit. Whatever the fraction had, the limit will also have. So this is why, uh, this is how you can consider units of a derivative. So we can get now to the problems that we want to be able to solve in this chapter, in this section. What are related rates problem? Essentially, I have it in a few words here, two or more functions of time are related to one another. Find the rate of change of one of the functions when the other is at a certain specific value. This is essentially what the problem is. Rate of change means instantaneous rate of change, which means derivative. So instead of trying to explain this, let's go ahead and solve a problem. Let's look at this problem. Imagine that you have the ocean and you have an oil rig, a uh, oil platform, but there's oil leaking from it and it's forming a circular region of oil on the surface of the, of the water and growing with time. Suppose the radius of the circle grows at a constant rate of 50 meters per hour. Uh, I guess I should not have this R here, hour is just H, 50 meters per hour. So you have a circle on the surface of the water with a radius growing outside, outwards at a rate of 50 meters per hour. This is a constant rate of growth. How fast is the area of the circle growing after 10 hours, time of 10 hours? So essentially what you have to, to think about in this type of problem, you're always gonna have two or more things changing uh, together and they, they have a relationship between them. In this case, the radius is changing. It's one of the things mentioned. And the other thing mentioned is the area of the circle. We want to know how fast it is growing. So first of all, we have a relationship between the two things. Area of a circle is pi times r squared. This is the formula for the area of a circle. Both of these numbers, a and r, are changing in time. So they are functions of t. And secretly, whenever you take derivatives here, if you, if you use a prime notation, secretly what it means is derivative with respect to this t variable, time. In particular, to say that the radius is always increasing at the same rate, 50 meters per hour, means precisely that the derivative r prime is always equal to 50. If you're gonna be using the same units in the problem, meters and hours, so that's r prime of t is always 50, whatever r is. So this is how you, you model the fact that this is a constant rate of increase. What is the problem asking for? 
the problem is asking for a prime because it's the how fast is the area changing or growing this means the the rate of change of a which is prime a prime and we don't want to know that as a formula we want to know it at a specific number hours number of hours equal 10 so a prime of 10. very good um how do we find this well usually you should you should always think about it this way there are the two variables r and a that are changing but they are related by one expression this is the expression right here a equals pi r square we are going to find a ddt of this expression time derivative this is much like the problems about implicit differentiation uh, with the difference, I guess, that the variable itself with respect to which you're taking a derivative does not even appear in the equation usually. The t is not part of, of this equation, but both a and r are functions of t. So even, even before taking ddt, if we want, you should try to write it this way, parenthesis t in front of the functions to remind you that they really are functions of t. So now we find a ddt a prime is equal to how do you differentiate pi r squared well pi is just a constant but then the derivative of r square is not just two times r but rather two r r prime because that tells you that this is how you apply the chain rule with the outer function being the square function with this is its derivative and the inner function is just r of t here is its derivative now in this formula, if you plug in r equals 10, uh, sorry, t equals 10 to get a prime of 10, what do you get? Well, there's just one problem here. Well, first of all, instead of pi two, I'm gonna write two pi. The one problem is this r of 10 number here. We don't know that. We do know r prime of 10 though. Let me just uh, plug this in, in here. r prime of 10, what is that? R prime is always equal to 50, no matter what time it is. Remember, the radius was increasing at a constant rate. So we can plug that into here, 50. All right, so that's giving you 100 pi R of 10. But what is R of 10? If we find that, then we can solve the problem, find A prime of 10. Well, now you can, you can either try to think about this just informally, reason about the problem, or you can actually write a formula for your R function. Uh, let me go back up so we can remember what the problem said. Remember that radius was increasing at a constant rate of 50 meters per hour. How much do you think the radius should be after 10 hours? It was 50 after one hour, 100 after two, 150 after three, and so on. After 10 hours, it will be 500. So something like this, you can say, informally or you can just try to write an actual formula for r r of t in this case is thinking about this in terms of formulas the initial radius was zero when the rate the circle started growing and then it started growing at a constant rate of 50 every hour so the function r of t is actually 50 times t which means r of 10 is 500 Uh, so I'm just going to include this explanation here. So you have this written down in case you're taking notes. This is the initial value of R. And I guess the 50 here is the hourly rate of increase 50 every hour. So anyway, now that we have R of 10, we are going to plug this into here. And we are going to get a prime 10 equals uh, 100 pi times r of 10 is 500. So this will give you 50,000 pi. What is the unit? Well, the unit of a is area. This problem, in this problem, lengths are measured in meter. So area is meter square. And remember what happens with the prime. You need to divide this by the unit of the 
independent variable, the time variable in this case, so hours. I think basically all related rates problems will be, will have an independent variable time. So meter squared per hour is, is a unit of rate of increase of area. But this is your final answer. So this is a related rates problem. Our goal for today is solve as many of these as we can. I'm gonna move on to the next one. These are basically word problems. So you're gonna to need to really understand what they're saying. Next problem, a funnel is shaped like a circular cone with a diameter of 40 and a height of 50. So you have a funnel, three dimensional. I'm actually gonna denote its radius here. The radius is 20 centimeters because they said the diameter is 40. So half of that is this radius of 20. And the height is 50. Again, centimeters. Now there is water inside of it draining at a constant rate. Uh, so we're, we're gonna, I guess, put that in here. The water is coming outside with a rate of 180 cubic centimeters per minute. 180 centimeter cube per minute. The question is how fast is the height of the water level changing when this height is equal to 20 centimeters? So the location where the water is is actually a little lower. This is where there's water. Just uh, 20 centimeters. Question is how fast is the height changing? This is the typical question in these problems. How fast? In other words, what is the rate of change? What is the derivative? In this case, the function is height. So this is one of the functions that's changing in the problem, height of the water. That's the thing that we're gonna denote by age of t. We are actually interested only in the moment 20, but you're gonna need to find general formulas for this age and some other variable in general times so that you can take a derivative. The 20 here is just indicating the particular moment the, that we actually want. Okay, what is the other variable that we are interested in this problem and that's also changing with time? That should be the volume. I know that because they told us how fast the volume is changing. Uh, they didn't, never said the word volume, but you like water draining outside. We have a constant rate for volume. So let's maybe call that V of T, volume of water. And this first one here was height of water. They told us that uh, V is changing at a constant rate. V prime of T is always the same number. And that number in units of centimeters and minutes is right here at 180. But I guess you have to be careful with this. It's actually negative because it's going down. The volume is decreasing. That's why I included this negative here, decreasing volume. Considerations like this is, are always gonna happen. This is always gonna be important to know. So that's V prime of T. And the question is asking for H prime, the how fast the height is changing. H prime of T equals how much when, this time they did not, Compare this to the previous problem. They did not ask this about a specific instant of time, like 10 hours. Instead, they said this is supposed to be when the height is equal to 20 centimeters. So when age of t is 20, what is age prime? Those are the data of the problem. Now, don't be, don't be misled by this, I guess. When you look at this expression, h of t equals 20, you might think, what is the derivative? What is h prime? Isn't that just zero? 20 prime is a constant prime, so zero. But no, this is a specific value of t only. 
only at that time, we don't know what time this is. I mean, we don't even know where the water even started to begin with, but that, that's irrelevant. All that we are asking about is when the height reaches this number 20, what is h prime? But the height itself is gonna be some function that we don't know. Okay, very good. What is the only thing missing before we can do this problem? Remember, there's always supposed to be a relationship between the variables, h and v in this case. And indeed, there is a geometric relationship between this height and the volume of water. How do we get that? Okay, let's try to write down a formula for the volume of water. You know that you already have the height of the cone, in general, h, and you have some radius here, maybe let's call that r. Uh, you can say t also, this is a function that's changing in time, but we, we don't need to consider this function in the problem as a, as a function of time. What is the volume in terms of the radius and height? Volume is, if you know the volume of a cone, area of the base, pi r squared, times height, h, divided by three, always three for pyramids and cones, things like that. So this is the relationship between V and H, except that we have this R in it, that we'd, we'd like to get rid of this. We can find this from the figure. Take a moment to try to think about this. Uh, by the way, forget about this 20 right here for now. This is only the specific value that we are interested in for the function H, but right now we are trying to find the general relationship between H and V. So, we are gonna be looking at this age here, the, this R, those are the numbers that we have at the moment, as well as the general parameters of the problem, the height and the radius of the funnel as a whole. Those are never changing. So the picture that we have right now is like this. You have a big radius at the top of 20 and the total height of 50. I'm taking a cross section of the cone. Now this is where the water is. Little age is down here and the thing that we call little r is here. You have a relationship between these numbers, which is very simple, a relationship of similar triangles. This smaller side of 20 divided by this larger side of 50 for the whole triangle should be the same ratio as this little r over this little h. So you have r is actually equal to 2h over 5. Now I'm, I'm plugging that back into here. Just so we have a formula that we wanted, uh, like, sorry, two h over five square h, just v and h in it, just the two variables that we are interested in. So pi over three, four h cubed over 25, three times 25 is 75. This is the formula for V in terms of H or vice versa. That's the one that we want to start taking derivatives of. Just remember that the functions are functions of time. So the derivative with respect to time, DDT, requires all the techniques that we know about implicit differentiation. So the chain rule basically. V prime is equal to four pi. H cube prime is three h square h prime. That's the chain rule, okay? We are basically differentiating h of t cubed by chain rule that becomes, ddt of that becomes three h of t squared, which is the derivative of the cube function, times h prime of t, which is the derivative of the inner function. So don't, don't forget that. All right, now, now the differentiation has taken place. This is now the time when you can start plugging in numbers that you already know for the specific instant that you're interested in. But I, I hope you realize that now you have everything you need. V prime, we have that. That's always constant in this problem, minus 180. Here it is. H prime of that instant is the one that we want to know. It is in this formula. And the other thing in this formula is h. h is given as 20 at this instant. So we can go ahead and start plugging those numbers. h 
h prime, I guess you can write h prime of t to be more precise, the number that you want to find at that instant. So now just solve this, uh, whatever this is going to give you. Let's see, 75 times 180 divided by 4 pi. 3 times 400 is uh, 1,200. That's your h prime of t. I guess I'm going to write that in on the other side. So I can write the units here. What is the unit of h prime? h is measured in centimeters in this problem. So centimeters per time unit. Time unit was given in the problem. Let me go back so we can look at it. When we said how fast the water is draining, we said centimeters cubed per minute. That's the unit of time, minute. And we should be happy that we found a negative value because that's to be expected. The height is going down, decreasing, because the water is draining. Now, yeah, whatever this number turns out to be, that's, that is the answer to this problem, h prime at that particular instant. Moving on to the next one, they are all basically the same. We're, we're always going to be working through them carefully like this because there is, there's quite a lot to be done in these problems. These are kind of long problems, but I hope the idea should be clear here. So in this one, when time is zero, you have these two people here, Sonic and Mario, standing at the same spot and they start running. Sonic is running north with a constant speed of 10 meters per second, which is quite fast. And Mario runs east with a constant speed of four meters per second. How fast is the distance between them changing after one minute? So you wanna measure this distance, let's call that D of T. D is a distance that's changing with time. You know that this triangle here uh, is, is actually going to be taller, much more taller than more tall than it is wide because well, Sonic is running faster here in the vertical direction. But this distance is changing with time. What are other things that are changing in time in this problem? There's actually two others, which are the position of the two people. In, in this case, maybe you call this position X and this one Y. That's essentially what they are. They are one X coordinate and one Y coordinate. Uh, so we wanna know how fast D is changing between them after one minute. All right, so the three variables, X, Y, and D, what is the relationship between them? Uh, if you think about this triangle here, even though I'm calling X the coordinate where the person is going to be, Mario in this case, uh, X is also the measure of the length of this triangle, the base. I should actually say it like this. This is a better indication of what X is, the distance that Mario has covered. And Y is the same thing on the vertical here. That's Y of T. So the Pythagorean theorem gives you the relationship between these quantities. It works like this. Uh, or I guess if you want to include the time, that is never a bad idea. D of t equals x of t, y of t, you know. Now you can use this to solve for t if you want, for d, by taking a square root, but that's not necessary. We know how to take derivatives, even though the function has not been completely solved for, in this case, the d function, the one that we want. You can still do this. Uh, implicit differentiation. The derivatives in each one of these terms are very similar. For example, the derivative of y squared is not just 2y. You multiply that by y prime because that's the chain rule. So this is, this is the general equation relating dx and y, and this is its derivative. Now we just need to plug in numbers in here. The ones that we, act, the ones that we want, the ones that we have, and see what we get from here. So first of all, what do we have? We do, okay, first of all is what do we want in the problem? 
how fast is the distance changing? What is the instantaneous rate of change of the distance? So what is D prime? When at uh, one minute, D prime of one, what is that? And what do we have? Okay, we have X prime and Y prime are given. Both of these numbers are increasing. Sorry, both, both X and Y are increasing at the same rate. X is increasing at a rate of four, Y at a rate of 10. So those are given. This is like for all time, for all T. Not just the T that we want, T equals one, but for all T. Those are the derivatives. Do we know X and Y though? This is once again a, a problem where it, many people will be able to just reason naturally to obtain them. It, just imagine the two people started at this origin here. Let's look at Mario, that he was running at four meters per second in this direction. And we are looking at one minute. Uh, I, I do have one slight mistake here that I, I, I never converted the units. I said one for minute, but I also used four and 10, which are per second. So I, I need to erase one of those. I mean, re, I'm gonna erase the one, replace that with 60. Just notice that because this is a, this is the time that we actually want. The time we want is one minute, which is 60 seconds, if you wanna use units of second. So anyway, if Mario is running four meters per second, then how how fast how far has he run after one minute or after sixty seconds? Well, that will be sixty times four, two hundred and forty. So you can think about it just like that, or you can write this: what is x of sixty, or in general x of whatever time you'd like. Initial position of x plus the constant change for every second times time. Similarly for y, initial position zero. Uh, we are calling zero the, the initial coordinate of both people. And rate of change 10, time is t. Okay, so this is for t, this is 10t. Those are the actual formulas for the positions, x and y. The things that we not always are going to have in the problem. But for problems like this one and like the first one, we need these because they ask about a specific time, a specific location in time and, and not like the funnel problem, which asked for a specific height. So once we have these, uh, we can find D as well. What is D of, well, I guess at the instant that we want, which is 60, we have those numbers, 240, and 600, D of 60, well, this was the relationship between D, X, and Y, the Pythagorean theorem. So this can uh, this allows you to find D of 60, taking a square root of 240 squared plus 600 squared. If you calculate this number, you get something like this. 417,600, uh, which I guess we can at least factor out 100 from inside of the square root and leave it like this. This is always preferred over a decimal approximation. This is, I mean, this is not a perfect square, but we can leave it like this. It's easy enough to write. That's D of 60, the distance between them at time 60. Now, finally, we have all the numbers that we needed, this one, the two values x and y, as well as the derivatives, x prime, y prime, you can find d prime of 60 using this formula. So I'm gonna write all this down, 2d d prime, so 2d of 60, d prime of 60 is equal to two times x times x prime, so x was 240, x prime was four, plus two times y, 600 times y prime, 
can. And solving for D prime. So I'm just gonna leave this like this. You could simplify this by dividing this number by two. Let's not worry about that. Of course, in general, if you have a timed exam, the numbers will be easier. But I hope this idea is clear here. We just need to write down the units. The units in this problem were given by meters and seconds. We used seconds, remember? We wrote the time as 60 seconds instead of one minute. So D is measured in meters because it's a distance. If you have D prime, that would be meters per second, the unit of distance over the unit of time. And again, this is a positive number. You should always check this, the fact that it's positive or negative. We know this distance is increasing, right? The two people are getting further apart in this problem. So the distance is increasing. So it is. it has to be positive. Next problem, at time zero, you have an observer and a hot air balloon, both on the ground, but 100 meters apart. Let's say here's the observer, here's the initial position of the balloon, 100 meters. And the balloon is actually going to start rising with a constant speed of 5, given in units of meters per second. Uh, now, I'm calling theta the angle between the ground and the observer's line of sight. So something like this. This is theta. It changes with time because the height of the balloon is also changing with time. So just like that, we already identified the two variables that are going to be changing in this problem. I mean, maybe there could be more, but there aren't, there aren't in this case the height of the balloon and this angle is, is something that we are also interested in. So it, it, also, it is also something that's changing. The question is how fast is theta changing when the balloon reaches one kilometer of altitude? So this is just like the second question, the one with the funnel, the one where the instead of asking for a specific instant of time, they ask about something in terms of one of the variables of the problem. In, the, in this case, the height. When the height is one kilometer. What does that mean for us? It's actually easier because it means we, don't, we do not have to understand how the numbers are changing with time, like age of t equals the initial height plus the rate times t. Uh, like we usually have to find these formulas if they are asking about a specific instant of time, let's say 30 seconds, but we're not doing that. So much like in problem number two, what do we actually want? So we can, you can call the time whatever you want, let t0 be the instant when the height is whatever we are interested in it, one kilometer, uh, because the unit given for distances was meter, here I'm going to convert that to meters. So it's 1,000 meters. Let's call that just T0. It's very easy to actually compute if you want, because you know, well, you know the, the balloon is rising at a constant rate of 5 meters per second. So how long does it take to reach 1 kilometer, 1,000 meters? It, it's 200 seconds. But you don't have to know this instant. You can just call that T0. So you have age of T0 is 1,000. And what the question is asking about is theta prime of T0. Let me just scroll back up so you can see why. How fast is theta changing? So what is theta prime? when the balloon is at this height so at this instant t0 when when h is equal to 1000 how is how big what is the actual value of theta prime this is the problem how do we solve this well let's find the relationship between h and theta looking at the triangle it's a right triangle that should be very easy to find what do you know about the 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 three things that appear in the triangle 
This is the opposite side. This is the adjacent side of the angle theta. If you take the tangent, you will find h over 100. Now, this is the relationship. This is the one that you want to find a derivative of because it's the general relationship. We do not use the specific value of 1000 for h in here. We don't want to do that yet. We want to find this general relationship first and find its derivative. So let's do that. How do you differentiate tangent of theta? Remember that this is a DDT. The, the derivative of tangent is, it would be secant square if this was a DD theta, but because it's DDT, we actually need to multiply this by theta prime. So because of chain rule, once again, that is the DDT of the left side and on the right side, that's much easier. Just h prime over 100. All right. Well, basically, I forgot to write this down, but the problem also told us what h prime of s, h, h prime of any t is, and what is that? They told us the balloon is rising with a constant speed of five meters per second. So h prime, if you're going to be measuring h as height, so get it's getting larger. So it is increasing, so it is a positive derivative of five. So I'm gonna go right, this is true for any time, right? So we can, we can plug that into this formula right here that is true for any time, five over 100 or one over 20. Very good. Well, you, you can also include the t's in here if you want. This is what the formula actually means, secant square of theta of t times theta prime of t equals one over 20. And this formula is almost what you need. You have the, the theta prime right here, the, the thing you want to find. But you don't know the secant square of theta, at least at the instant that you are interested in. We should try to find that now. So I'm going to write t0 in this formula. It is, a, it is a formula that's true for all times. But now I can plug in the time that we want, the t0, right? So how do we find secant square of theta of t0? OK, what do we know about this instant t0? Looking back in the picture, the base here is always 100. This is theta of that instant t0. The height at that instant is 1,000. It was 1 kilometer. So from this picture, we should be able to find the secant square of theta of t0. Secant square is just one over cosine. And so if you want to need, you want to find the cosine, you want to find the hypotenuse here. Maybe big H for hypotenuse. What is big H? In this picture, 100 square plus 1,000 square by the Pythagorean theorem. So like 1 million plus 10,000. It's kind of ugly number that does not really have a square root. But you can factor at least uh, there's there's four zeros, so we can write a hundred square root of a hundred and one. Once again, this is preferred to decimals. You should not you should never write approximations to numbers in the middle of your equations. Only in the end, only in the final answer, if at all. So this this right away right here is a good form to write this hypotenuse. Very good. So we needed this because now we want to find secant square of theta of t0. So as I said, that's 1 over cosine square. Cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. But because it's 1 over, we're going to do hypotenuse over adjacent. And it's also squared, cosine squared. So hypotenuse over adjacent is just the square root of 101. And that number squared becomes just 101. This is the secant square of theta at the instant we want. Why did we want to find that? Once again, because it's right here in the formula that we need. So our last step now will be to plug this number into that formula. 
let me write down the formula again. Secant squared times theta prime equals one over 20. That was the formula. Now we found secant squared and you can now find theta prime. So one over 20 times 101, that is the year 2020. That was by pure coincidence. I did not know the answer would be this. And what are the units? Okay, theta does not have units by itself because it's an angle. Angles are measured as pure numbers. But when you measure an angle as a pure number, you usually call that dimensionless unit a radian. Angles should be measured in radians. This would be the unit of theta. Because it's theta prime, we need to divide this by the unit of time, which is seconds in this problem. So theta is changing very, very slowly, uh, much less than a thousandth of a radiant every second. That's consistent with what we expect. The balloon is already very high up. This 1,000 is much higher than this 100 here. So the, the triangle is already very tall. And it's getting taller, but very small, very, very slowly. So as I said, this is a problem where you do not need to actually find what this time instant was. The, the question never asked for it, never told you what it was. But you could if you, if you wanted. It, was, it would be very easy. Uh, yeah, so the, for the recitation, we'll have more problems like these. They take longer than normal problems. They are like word problems. And you need to re read them very carefully to understand what are the variables changing and how you're going to write the relationship between these variables. That's right here. <laughs>